But what I want to show you, what you can see that I've got right away here, look, I've got my A1S wave function. There it is as a function of our A1. I've got my B1S wave function. I kept it in terms of our B1 because in Mathematica, I can do that, right? Okay. Um, but I could have also made it in terms of our A1 if I want. And what I want to show you right away here, I'm looking at the, um, let's advance the slide. So I'm looking at the psi plus state. And of course, we know that, um, uh, let's see here. We know that the square of the wave function is going to give us the probability distributions. And so here I've got that written down. I've got N normalization constant times A1S plus B1S. And then here on my plot, I'm looking at psi squared. Um, so let's walk through this and I'll show you what the result is on this manipulate. So we know what N squared is, right? That's our normalization constant. I'm just gonna say norm. Um, and so I this came from um, foiling, right? So we'll say that psi plus was N times A plus B. And so when I square this whole thing, right, I square that and I square that, um, I get this, you know, first, outside, inside, last, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. So a squared is the probability that the electron is confined to a. And so that's, right, just going to take on the pure 1s orbital, right? When I square this a function, that's just the 1s orbital, right, as we know it. b squared is the probability that the electron is confined to b. And so once again, that's just going to be, um, you know, 1s orbital, okay? And now this 2ab, this is what we call the overlap density or the overlap integral. And this describes the enhancement of electron density in the internuclear region, okay? So according to MO theory, here's the concepts to know. Bonds form when electrons accumulate in regions where atomic orbitals overlap and interfere constructively. So this addition sign, right, these plus signs, those are going to give us constructive interference, as I'll show you momentarily, okay? And we know that a bond will form, according to MO theory, a bond will form if there is constructive interference in that internuclear zone between the two nuclei, okay? Electrons can interact with both nuclei, which lowers the overall energy of the molecule relative to the energy of the individual atoms, and we'll see that soon. A sigma orbital is a bonding orbital, which is also called psi plus in this simple example right here. And similarly, our sigma orbital, just like in valence bond theory, it's cylindrically symmetrical about the internuclear axis, right? And the molecular electron configuration for H2 plus 1 is given as 1 sigma 1. Technically, it's 1 sigma G1, and we're going to talk about what that extra G means um, momentarily. All right, so this is a look at my simulation right here. And so I've got this on a manipulate plot where now I've got uh, my two 1s orbitals, uh, 2.5 angstrom apart. So this is all in scales of angstrom. And so now um, when I manipulate big R, I manipulate it to be smaller. I'm manipulating the two nuclei to get closer together, okay? And we have to accept, you know, this is only a one electron system. So this is kind of viewing this as a superposition of the electron density being uh, centered on both atoms, okay, which is an approximation. Because really we know when I form an H2 molecule, I've got an electron and an electron in each atom, okay? So that's where this is an approximation, that technically this is H2 plus but we're really going to use it as a model to describe H2, okay? And so now as I get these closer together, something really cool starts happening. Look, you can start to see shared probability. That's what this, um, so the blue color right here is um, zero. 
So this in this contour plot, my blue color is where the wave function takes on a value of zero. So wherever it takes on a value of non-zero, um, you know, you can see where it's increasing, right? That means that um, it's having larger probability. So you can see right now, the probability is still mostly centered on the two individual nuclei. But as I get these close to each other, maybe about an angstrom or less, look at that. There is now probability, there's now electron probability existing between those two nuclei. And here we have created H2 plus in Mathematica, um, which is really cool. And of course my model also doesn't have any kind of like repulsion. So I can actually just put these right on top of each other um, without any consequences in here. So I haven't built in anything about the potential energy on this situation, right? And that's, that's the approximation of the LCAO, the linear combination of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals, all right? Um, but the sweet spot, as it turns out, for H2 is right around an angstrom or so, and um, there it is. That's my sigma bond, which is really cool. Okay, moving on. So, the psi plus squared is the bonding orbital. It's the one sigma bonding orbital, okay? And so you can see from my simulation, right, regions of, inter of constructive interference and I showed you this picture in valence bond theory, so this is still applicable, right? So you can see that constructive interference right there owes to that sigma bond forming. And the way we view this overlap integral, this 2AB, this function describes that enhanced electron density that we see right there, okay? And on this picture right here, each of those dots represents the nuclei. So I'll put positive charges there next to them. Okay. Well, the psi minus state is the antibonding um, sigma orbital. Okay. And so for now, I'm just going to call that a two sigma, but we're going to, um, we're going to put a, a more um, specific set of nomenclature to this. Okay. And so now you notice there's still an a squared plus a b squared, but now there's a negative two ab. And that makes it the anti overlap integral. And so now if you look at this here, in the anti-overlap integral, um, one of these takes on positive values and one takes on negative values. So when they get close to each other, they destructively interfere. And so now there's no electron density between the two nuclei, rather the electron density is pushed out away from the internuclear zone. So it literally is an anti-bond. It's not going to make a bond. And on my model here, if I keep scrolling down, you can see there I've got it, N normalization constant times A minus B, okay? And now this is really cool. If I go to that magic about, you know, one angstrom or so, look at that. They don't want to bond. And it, you can almost see that they're like repelling each other even though technically I don't have that feature built in. Um, this is all entirely from destructive interference, okay? And so uh, this is pretty cool. So they don't form any kind of bond at all. All right. So 